we are going to start this tutorial right here at the printer because I know most of your questions will be about this printing process with the DTF film. Hello everyone and welcome to Crafting with Delanda. It's me again, Delanda, and thank you so much for joining me today. We are doing the sublimation DTF hack again, but we are going to start right here at the printer. I have my DTF film. Remember, I'm using the Wellister brand. This is the exact same brand I used the first time I did this tutorial when I made the infamous Gnomes shirt. Same film. We're going to follow the same process for the most part, except I'm going to show you how to make sure you have the right printer settings because that was one of the questions that I got asked the most often and I definitely want to help you with that. At the end of this tutorial, if you find it helpful, please consider liking the video, subscribing to my channel, and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. Now before we do anything else, let's look at the printer settings and get our first image printed out so we're not going to be working in order today now one of the things it says on this package is that all print sides are placed uniformly face up that means that as soon as i take it out of the package it's already on the right side that's the printing side so i'm going to take some sheets out i'm going to take about three or four sheets out okay so we're going to do a little bit different than we did last time so i have let's see one Two, I have three sheets right here. I have my paper tray sticking out. I'm gonna load this in the back tray back here. Okay, so you see that? Face up, three sheets, tray out. I am going to click print, and then we will get into the tutorial once we see the film come out of the printer, okay? And you can see my image and you see I don't have any roller marks. I don't have any issues at all with this image. It looks fantastic. Now, of course, because this ink is wet, I need to go ahead and apply the powder now. And we are going to go ahead and do that. And so this tutorial is way out of order, but that's okay. Okay, I have the image in my box, in this little box right here. And I am going to sprinkle a generous amount of powder on top. Remember, I did this twice because I'm making two shirts. So I'm going to follow this same process twice. I'm going to do this for a white shirt and one time for a gray shirt. Completely over the image. Making sure that I'm getting all of the wet ink. The powder has to be applied to wet ink. Okay. So here's the image. I am, you see I don't have any roller marks. I am going to place this on my heat press. I'm just place it on the tray for about one minute. The heat press is set to 385 degrees for 40 seconds. Let's head over to the heat press. While that image is sitting on the heat press, I am going to get this powder placed back into the bag. The materials I'm using in this project include the Wellister DTF powder. This is Wellister DTF film in the A4 size. I'm using a Teflon sheet. I am using Cricut heat resistant tape. These are both 100% cotton shirts. I have one in white and one in gray. I will also be using my Epson Ecotank 2760 sublimation printer and I will be using my HTV Ront Auto Heat Press. Now you will only see me download and print the design one time. However, I did print this image twice because I used one on each of these shirts. I will go over to Creative Fabrica and show you how to get the image downloaded and extracted 
to be used in Microsoft Word. So let's head on over to the Creative Fabrica website. What I'm going to do is download this file. In order to find this file, I just did a search for files that said, Hello Spring. This one really caught my eye. So I'm going to download it. I'm going to click right here where it says Hello Spring SVG. I'm going to click Extract All. I'm going to click Browse. And I already have it saved in my Creative Fabrica Files folder, but I'm going to save it again just to show you how to do that. So I'm just gonna call it Hello Spring File Part Two. And now I can navigate to that folder and I can extract the files there. Okay, I can close all of this out and now I can go to Microsoft Word. I'm going over to Microsoft Word. When I open Microsoft Word, I can see that it opens up in portrait mode. The view opens up in portrait mode. I'm going to keep this in portrait mode because the file that I'm using is um, it's more upright than it is wide. So what I'm going to do is I am going to stretch out my margins because I still want to make the file a little bit bigger. And I want to use up all of the available space that I have. I'm stretching the margins at the top and bottom. Also the same way that I did if you saw the GNOME tutorial. And so now what I'm going to do is click insert pictures from this device. And it's, I'm not selecting the SVG, I'm selecting the PNG. I'm going to click insert and there's the file. Now what I'm also going to do is right click on this and I'm going to select wrap text tight and that will give me the option to move the file where I want it. And what I did is I just stretched it out a little bit more. I kind of just stretched it to capacity. Um, and before I printed it, that's what I did. That's my heat press letting me know that it's ready. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to click layout. And I'm going to make sure that my paper size is actually set to A4. Because remember, the DTF film is a4 so i'm going to click size i'm going to select a4 okay you can see it kind of cut off a little bit on the sides over there so i might need to do that just to be on the safe side let me look at my picture format i think i want to change that to 8.03 okay yeah that's the size i want all right and let me go back to that layout and make sure my sizing is right the size should be set to a4 so now I'm going to click File, Print. I'm going to select my Epson EcoTank 2760 series printer. I'm going to select Printer Properties. I am going to keep make sure that my document size is set correctly here to A4. My paper type is Photo Paper Glossy. This is very, very, very important. The quality is high. My print preview is on. My more options, I do have mirror image checked. I do not have high speed checked. My custom settings, if I click advanced, I have my color control set to Adobe uh, RGB with a gamma at 2.2. This next part is very important. I highly suggest you either pause the video right here or slow it down. So I clicked on maintenance. I clicked on extended settings and I changed the print density to negative five. Typically the default setting for density is at zero. So it's normally like right here at zero percent. I decreased the density and that is why I don't have any roller marks. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to click OK here. And what you saw when I started the video is what the settings look like when my printer started printing. OK, so I'm not going to print it again because I've already printed it. All right, so we are ready to go over to the heat press. Everything that I'll do from here will be back on the camera. I let my image sit on the heat press for a minute or so, maybe a little bit longer than a minute. And now I will grab both shirts. I have the image printed out twice. The first shirt that I'm going to press is this uh, Gildan 100% cotton shirt. I'm going to remove this plastic or this sticker. 
I am going to get a crease down the middle of the shirt. I'm going to come down three finger lengths from the collar. I am going to use some heat resistant tape, just two pieces on both sides. So one piece here and one piece here. And I'm also going to use a Teflon sheet. Okay, the timer has beeped. So I will take the shirt out and the Teflon sheet. And we will not remove the sheet yet because this is a cold peel. Okay, it beeped. So I am going to once again remove it from my heat press. I'm not going to turn this off because I am going to do a second press for 15 seconds. So we'll let this cool down and then we'll peel it. All right, let's peel it and reveal, <laughs> reveal it. Okay, let's see. Ooh. <laughs> Look how beautiful that is. Look at how gorgeous this is i love it <laughs> i love it i love it i love it i don't even want to press this again i really don't feel like i need to press this again i did not press the blue gnomes twice i honestly don't feel like i need to press it again I've, i'm probably not going to okay let's see now this is my first time doing a white shirt so i'm very curious to see if it's going to be more vibrant than the gray but let's see and i don't really wear oh wow Oh wow. <laughs> oh wow. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. It is amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so let's look at the white in comparison to the gray. Okay, there's the white one. Here's the gray one. They both look fantastic i'm not going to press these again if you are going to make this design i suggest you know you maybe try pressing it twice but i don't feel the need to do that i think this looks fantastic just the way that it is and if i were to compare it to my gnomes shirt you know this was the original and then this one has been washed a lot of times it still looks really good and I did not press this one twice. I'm not gonna press these twice. All right, so please leave me a comment below. Which one is your favorite? Do you like the white? Do you like the gray? Do you love both equally? Let me know what you think down in the comments below, but I love this. Hopefully seeing the printer settings again helped you. If you have found this tutorial helpful, please consider liking the video, subscribing to my channel, and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. Thank you so much for joining me today. And thanks for watching. Bye.